Okay, so at this point, you guys have taken your notes on one point perspective and you've seen some digital examples. Um, so this is an example of your final that you guys will be working on. Everybody's gonna set up the street the same way where you have the sidewalk split over here. Your requirements for this project are to fill the left side, fill the right side with buildings, and then every building needs to have a detail on it or multiple details. So when you're looking at this, and I know it might be a little bit hard to see because this is drawn in pencil, um, when you're looking at it, it might seem a little bit intimidating, but we're going to go through step by step on how to complete all of these buildings and the details in one point perspective. So the practices that we're going to do as a class look like this. Okay, we're going to learn how to draw the basic building, ignore the chair, that was just an extra. We're going to learn how to overlap buildings, how to create an alleyway, how to do a sidewalk. We're going to learn how to do buildings on the horizontal vertical side and also the side that's going towards the vanishing point. You're going to learn how to create a garage, how to put signs on your buildings, how to do the brick texture and wood siding, and then how to do more of a steeple roof with shingles on that as well. Okay, so we're going to go through this step by step. It takes about two class periods to go through all of these. Some of you guys are going to pick this up really quick and it's going to be easy for you. That's great. There's going to be a little bit of waiting around for you. You can help out other people at your table if you're struggling. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll do one example here and then we'll pause the video and then um, the teacher will come around and help you guys if you need help before we move on. You have to get the basics of this one down first before you can do anything else. It'll make everything harder if we don't get this one down. Okay, so I'm going to start off. You guys will have free draw paper and you're going to fold it in half. You're going to fold your free draw paper in half. You're going to fold it in half one way, and it doesn't matter which way you fold it in half. Okay, so I have mine here. I'm going to fold it in half one way. I'm going to open it up. This is why it doesn't matter. We're going to open it up. We're going to fold it in half the other way. So we're just trying to give ourselves four spaces to work in. You do not need to draw the lines because you're going to see the folds in your paper, but I need to do it so you guys can see it on screen. Okay, now whenever we're practicing, we're working horizontally, which means that it is going to be longer, the width is going to be longer than the height. So make sure that you're not turning it and working vertically, we're working horizontally in all of our practice spaces. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is draw a little point in the upper right-hand corner. Make sure it's in the upper right-hand corner and you're gonna label it vanishing point. This is the only time we're gonna label our vanishing point and we have to have a vanishing point every single time we're drawing in one point perspective. We're only drawing in one point, which means we have one vanishing point, okay? So then you guys can use a straight edge, you can use a ruler or you can use a protractor. I like to use the protractor just because we're working in such a small space. When you work on your final, you'll need a ruler as well. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to create a square or rectangle, whatever you end up with, in the lower left-hand corner. I'm going to do a rectangle. And I want to make this with vertical and horizontal lines. Now, to make sure that it's vertical going up and down, I use the side of the paper to make it parallel. So parallel means I want this to be going in the same direction as this line right here. They should never, ever touch. Even if you're slightly crooked, you're going to throw off the illusion of this drawing. So make sure that you're parallel with the side here draw my one vertical line. Then horizontal, I use the top of the paper and try to keep my straight edge parallel with the top of the paper. Okay, I'll do the same thing up here. Again, this one needs to be vertical. Then I just erase if I have an extra line here. Okay, now in order to connect this to the vanishing point, I'm gonna put my pencil on my vanishing point and I'm just gonna move it to this corner right here. Okay, I'm gonna connect all three of these corners. I'm not gonna connect this one because I would have to draw through my shape. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm not actually gonna draw it all the way to the vanishing point because I'm gonna end up chopping the building. Okay, you can see the dashed lines would go towards the vanishing point, but I'm gonna chop it. So I don't wanna draw a line I'm just going to erase anyway. So again, I'm gonna connect it to my vanishing point. And this is where a lot of kids 
get lost. What they want to do is they connect one and then they guess and they just throw it off into space and throw this off into space. If I put the straight edge on it and it's not going towards the vanishing point, it's not correct. So make sure that you're, or you're always going towards your vanishing point. Now to chop the building or to create a top and sides, I'm going to use the same vertical line and I'm just going to chop this side right here, not the top. And I just slide it over, making sure that it's parallel with this line. And I draw a line. So this one is parallel with this one. They need to go the same direction, which is vertical. This one is horizontal. I push it up. I find that corner right there, making sure my line is still horizontal. And I draw the line here. So this one needs to be parallel with this one. Now I need to erase any of the extra lines that I have. This is why we don't draw the lines all the way to the vanishing point. Your final drawing will be a mess. Now, in our practices, it is okay to make mistakes. Fix them now on the practices. Ask questions now on the practices before we get into our final drawing. Okay, so at this point, you can pause the video and finish this. Make sure you understand what's going on before you go to the next one. I'm gonna continue on, okay? So in our next space, we're gonna put our vanishing point in the upper right-hand corner again, and we're gonna draw a building, okay? So this time I'm not gonna talk you through it, I'm just gonna draw it. We're gonna leave space underneath, so don't draw it all the way down to the bottom, okay? And the buildings I draw are somewhere between a square and a rectangle, okay? So if you end up with a building that's a square, all right, so I'm going to connect it to my vanishing point, not all the way. I'm going to chop it with this vertical line. Chop the top. Okay, now we're going to add a sidewalk. This is new. So what I do with the sidewalk is I'm still connecting it to my vanishing point, and I'm going to draw what would be the top of the sidewalk. Then I'm going to draw down. Now, I want my sidewalk, if I look at this vertical line right here, I want the corner to be right here. So I draw, and you don't actually have to draw this line, I just want you guys to see it. I have my point here, it's about a finger width down, and I'm going to connect that to my vanishing point. And then the bottom of the sidewalk, I just make a horizontal line, and I continue on with the building here. Okay, that's the outline of my sidewalk. Now I need to divide it. This is where it gets kind of tricky. If I'm down here, I'm going to use the vanishing point to divide the sidewalk lines. It'll look kind of weird to you at first. You're going to be tempted to just draw the line straight down, but you want to use your vanishing point, right? Now you see that my um, straight edge is not quite reaching down to the bottom, so I might have to adjust that. So I just continue using my vanishing point. I'll slide that down. Okay. Now the sidewalk lines on this side are going to be horizontal. And I'll continue that all the way up. Now the closer they get to the vanishing point, the closer your lines are going to get together. Okay, so I'm gonna write a little note. These are horizontal. These go towards the vanishing point. You do not need to write this. This is just for you when you're looking up at the board when the video is paused. That's your reference, okay? Now we're gonna add an alleyway. So when I add an alleyway, this is what it's gonna look like on your final. You're gonna have a gap in between that you can walk through, okay? So I need to start this building to the side. Anytime I start a building, I always start with a horizontal and vertical rectangular square shape, okay? What I'm gonna do is make sure that there's a gap between one side and the other. So I'm gonna draw a vertical line. So I leave a gap, I draw a vertical line. This is basically this line right here. So I know I'm gonna to go to the left to finish off my horizontal and vertical shape. 
A lot of kids stop right here and think that's good, but we're missing one line, which is our bottom of our building. That's what's going to create your alleyway. That needs to be horizontal. So this is the alleyway in between. Okay. Now I do the same thing we've been doing and I turn this shape into a building. We got our bottom already. I'm gonna chop it. And I'm gonna chop it again. Okay, so we have our alleyway. Again, if you need to pause this video at any time, go ahead. All right, the last thing we're gonna do on this exercise is to create a building that's overlapping. Now I have this one with the dots on it so you can see where the building would be placed behind it, but we're not gonna see all of these dotted lines in our final. So what I do is I just choose somewhere on my building and I try not to line it up with a line that I already have. Like I wouldn't wanna start a building right here. So what I do is I start off with my horizontal and vertical shape. and then I turn that into a building. I can stop it wherever I want. And you're gonna see that the closer you get to your vanishing point on the horizon line right here, the less of the top of the building you're gonna see. Okay, so then I can just stop that right here, erase my extra lines. That's all we're gonna do in this area right here. Now, when I mentioned that the closer your building is to the horizon line, the less of the top you're gonna see. I'm gonna try to explain that a little bit better here. Um, with this example, our horizon line is the horizontal line that would go across. This is where the sun is gonna set, where the earth, um, where the division between the earth and the sky is. So when I have a building that is below the vanishing point, you see the top of it, okay? When it is equal with the horizon line right here, you're not even gonna see any of the top of it. So when I draw cities, I generally try to have it above or below to give it more of a 3D illusion because to me that doesn't look 3D even though it's correctly drawn. And when I'm looking at this building right here, you're not gonna see the top of it. Think if you're walking downtown, you're underneath the buildings, you're not gonna be able to see the top of it because it's above the horizon line. So your buildings will look different depending on where you place them on that horizon line and where they are compared to your vanishing point. All right, so we're gonna start with our third practice down here. We're gonna put our vanishing point, we're gonna try it over here on the upper left-hand corner. Okay, we're going to make a little bit bigger of a building because we need space on this side to practice doors and windows and space on this side. So we're going to make a little bit larger of a building. Again, we're going to start with our horizontal and vertical lines. Okay, and then you're going to connect the points to your vanishing point. Oh, hold on, I'm gonna pause it. All right, so I connected one line. I'm gonna connect the other. This at this point should be review. You guys should be able to draw your building pretty quickly. Okay. Whenever I draw any window or doors, anything I add to this shape right here, I use the outside lines as my guide. So if this outside line right here is vertical, the outside of my window is going to be vertical. If the top line is horizontal, the top side of my window is going to be horizontal. Okay, same thing with the bottom. I'm following the rules of the outside of the shape. Now I'm going to add a trim on this by just drawing my lines in about 45 degrees and just connecting them. It makes it look a little bit more detailed and it makes your drawings look more advanced or look more advanced. Okay, same thing when I'm dividing the window, instead of just doing a plain old cross on the inside, I'm gonna draw a cross, but I'm going to make it into more of a shape than just a line. Okay, so I leave a gap in the middle so that way I can add my lines here. And then I just erase the little gap in between. 